Hi everyone, this is For the Love of Comics and I've got a question for you. Can you name a comic you love that you'll never read again? Now, I'm asking for a couple of reasons. One, obviously, because it's day 14 of 31 Days of Comics, the prompt-based comics recommendation game that we play from time to time on this channel. And that's the prompt for day 14, a comic you love that you'll never read again. But my question is really, can you name such a thing? Because if I'm to be perfectly honest, this category has absolutely flummoxed me. Now, I've been frustrated with prompts on 31 Days of Comics in the past, most notably with the most beautiful scene in any comic, where I wondered how it was possible to pick just one as the most beautiful scene. But there's a difference. At least I understood what was being asked for. For today's prompt, I'm having trouble understanding the prompt itself, that decision to never read something again. That seems like a really drastic decision no matter what, but if it's something you really decide disliked or something that didn't affect you in one way or the other, if it completely bored you, then I can understand this idea that there's so much more to read. Why would I revisit something that made such a negative or no impression on me? But once you link that idea of never reading something again to something you love, not just enjoy or like, but love, that's where today's prompt kind of loses me. Rereading something or how something rewards rereading has long been my measure of what separates the great stuff from the okay stuff. The ability to stand up to repeated scrutiny is a distinguishing factor of art. So I had to really imagine myself in another pair of shoes to try to figure out what would categorize as something that one loves and will never read again. Let's get rid of the superficial things first. A very long series or voluminous work, as much as I love it, may not be something that I'll be returning to, at least from beginning to end, in many cases. If I think of the complete archives of Peanuts, for example, I've often wondered, am I ever going to sit down and read every single volume back? to back. A similar thing could be said for long-running series in manga or in western comics where the sheer length of the work may make it something irrespective of your love, something you're not going to reasonably or realistically revisit. But I don't think the prompt is necessarily saying you have to read it from beginning to end. I think even if you picked up a volume in the middle, it would count as reading it again. And in that way I can say, no, I think this category wants something that you're never going to look at again. So the next thing I can think of is something that you loved at a certain point of time but no longer love in the same way and so therefore will not return to it. It might apply to a number of things from one's childhood or from one's youth, things that were extremely important at one point of time but in the rear view mirror have lost their sheen somewhat. But once again, I don't think that sounds like today's prompt. Something you once loved but no longer do could almost be the prompt for a different day of comics. But let's extend this to say, suppose there was something I really loved once and I suspect I may not love it as much if I return to it and therefore I never wish to return to it because I don't want it to be diminished in my memory. This I think is kind of interesting and for me a good example of that might be those little mini comics with He-Man toys that I used to get when I was a kid and these are some of those original comics that I had and these were fascinating and spellbinding to me at a certain age and over the course of my childhood childhood, I must have reread each of these little issues dozens if not hundreds of times. But I have returned to them. True, they didn't create for me the kind of singular experience they did as a child, but it allowed me to transport myself back to a time that I was experiencing stories at a very formative stage. In fact, reading these handful that have survived from my childhood just made me more nostalgic for the others that I had read that I no longer own, and I ended up buying the Dark Horse hardcover collection of these mini comics. So things like that are obviously not working in this category for me either. And the last obvious thing that I can think of is something that you loved but created such an emotional impact on you, such a devastation was wrought upon you that you're fine not revisiting that again. You're very thankful for having the experience but you don't wish to go through that emotional turbulence, whatever it might have been, again. But even when I think about something some of the most emotionally devastating comics I've read, whether they're fiction or non-fiction, if I love them, I know I will reread them. Maybe not tomorrow, maybe not the next week, but I do absolutely somewhere in my future intend on returning to them. And this is not just because art 
rewards and withstand scrutiny, but also because you change as a reader. So as I grow older at different times of life, a piece of art might be something that affects me differently or I might see things differently in it. And this extends to everything, not just comics that I've loved. There are so many categories of even comics that I don't love that I fully plan on revisiting or wish to revisit one day. So then what remains? If you're not talking about works that you didn't love in the first place, if you're not talking about long works and reading them from beginning to end, if all the emotionally devastating reads I can think of are things that I've read at least twice, what then remains? I got so confused that I was tempted to skip this day and just do a different category. But what I decided to do is take one look through all my shelves and see if there were any books that I've only read once and never returned to. Like many of you, I do have books that I've not read even once, but obviously they don't count over here. Going through my books, I did find a handful that I haven't revisited ever, but in every case, it was something I fully intended to read at some point of time again. I was almost about to give up when I found this slim little book between two larger books and it had been easy to overlook that I had indeed only read once when I first bought it and from what I could remember, I loved it but it made me feel uncomfortable and that was one of the reasons I could now identify as why I'd never gone back to it. This is Elmer, written and drawn by Jerry Alangolan. Here's what I remembered about Elmer. It's a Filipino comic in black and white, written and drawn by Jerry Alangolan, who American comic superhero readers might know as an inker of several Marvel and DC works, including Superman Birthright. But Elmer was the first comic by him that I read. This is an absurd, even extremely absurd story because it tells the story of how in the late 1970s, every chicken in the world became instantly sentient. They had human consciousness and very quickly human language. The world then had to deal with this, sometimes rejecting living next to chickens with violence and with what eventually classifies as genocide as laws around the world change to give chickens the same rights as humans. And the periods of violence and hiding are then followed by an uneasy social fabric in which chickens apply for the same jobs and work along alongside humans and interspecies romance becomes a question of debate. And there were two big things that I remembered from this comic. One, that the central character was a second generation chicken. It was his parents who had come of sentience about 30 or 40 years ago. Chicken's lives are also extended by this phenomenon. And he wasn't a very likable character, although he ended up being quite empathetic. And the other thing that I remembered probably more was the violence against the chickens and the questions of genesis side in treatment and how does humanity live with what it has done now that things are different. And as I was remembering all of this, I think I identified the reason I never went back to Elmer is because it made me a little uncomfortable. Now, I'm not a vegetarian or a vegan. I do like eating meat. And somewhere in my head, I think this created larger questions about the food industry and how we treat animals in order to give ourselves food tough questions that maybe I don't want to deal with. Now, I don't want to get into the politics of the situation, but I did want to understand why I hadn't returned to this comic that I was absolutely sure was a masterpiece. And while I was asking these questions to myself, uh, it's a slim little book. I did reread it. And here are a couple of my new thoughts. This is definitely a masterpiece. This is one of the most wonderful comics that I've ever read. Its absurdity is matched by its heart. Its intelligence is matched by its ambition. And what it achieves in originally four issues is frankly amazing. It raises questions about civil liberties and rights. It feels like it should be a metaphor or an analogy, but neither slavery nor the Holocaust nor the kind of genocides that have happened in Asia, Africa, Europe over the years, none of them seem to fit in directly. What it's talking about is so unusual. For example, the chickens, once they've become sentient and they eat at a dining table with forks and knives, just like all of us, they eat pork because they love pork. They eat other animals. It's not a crusade for vegetarianism or veganism. The fact that I was misremembering or misinterpreting what I thought the story was about 
was just one of the discoveries I was happy to make upon rereading this. The other thing is, and I really don't know how I forgot this, is that this entire story is kind of given to us in flashback. Elmer of the title isn't our central character. Elmer is his father. And the aging of parents and the loss of parents is the strongest theme in this book, more than the chickens coming alive. Our protagonist has never been able to connect with his father. And when his father passes away, he feels that that opportunity is gone forever. But his mother gives him his father's journal. And it's in reading the journal as a second generation sentient chicken that he finally understands what his parents went through and how they have what they have today. There are shades of immigrant stories and diaspora cultures in this as well. But once again, it just defies any easy one-to-one correlation. And the final big thing that I'd forgotten is exactly how funny this comic can be. A lot of this is quite dark. A lot of this is quite sad. But the moments of humor are truly keeping with the absurd setup. The fact that our hero is not really likable is also played for laughs to the audience right up to the moment where our loyalty starts switching and we want things to be better. Once I'd finished rereading Elmer, I was feeling very foolish. There's no reason for me to have put off rereading the slim work. The ideas I had in my head were incorrect. I remembered it incorrectly. And then I read the afterword by Jerry Alangalan in which he talks about how he has wanted to tell his own stories. He's been fortunate to have contacts and get these jobs, but what he really wants to do is tell his stories. Not only did he write and draw this himself, but I think he also self-published this in the Philippines in these four single issues before SLG reprinted the collected edition. And rereading that afterward, I remember that Jerry Alangolan passed away some years ago unexpectedly, he wasn't that old. And rereading the afterword in which he talks about wanting to do more like this and me wanting to have read more of his stuff and never having found other comics written and drawn by him and knowing at that time some years ago that I never would, somewhere I think that was the saddest thing about this book. The fact that such a magnificent work was created by somebody who who I won't get to get more of. Now I'm thinking somewhere in the back of my mind, it wasn't the comic, but the afterword that I didn't want to read again. So although I pulled out Elmer because it was the only thing I could find on my shelves that seemed to fit for today's category, I'm completely fine with it instead turning into a recommendation for a unique work of comics. Thank you everyone for watching till the end and thank you to my brand new patrons and YouTube members. For those of you who don't know, as of last week, For the Love of Comics is 100% funded by the viewers. And if you're interested in supporting what we do, join these fine folks in the Patreon or the YouTube memberships, whichever one you want by following the links below. This has been For the Love of Comics. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you at the next video.